Hey folks, Whip here, and welcome to my hardcore Minecraft world. With over 5,800 days survived in this world, I've done a lot of stuff. And as much as the YouTube meta says go bigger, today I want to relax and enjoy the process of building a coastal fishing village, starting from this flat piece of Minecraft terrain. We've got to create a space some villagers actually want to live in, and more importantly, fish at. So leave a like on this episode and please subscribe. Can you believe it's been over two months since I built a village? I'm building a medieval fantasy world here and I haven't even added new homes for all of the invisible people who inhabit this world to live inside I mean I'm not alone here making it all up I I promise I brought yeah there's definitely definitely people that live here first step to reaching the village location is we need a road headed all the way out there this is going to be a very long road stretching out a few hundred blocks so the first step will be to clear out all of the trees to establish the route and so far we've made it through there to at the top of the hill and I'm down here and I've got woo we've got a while to go for all the way out there one hour tree chopping session later because i went the wrong way and all the trees and more are cleared out as these last leaves despawn we have made it to the water it's just behind this next layer oh oh i saw a pillager up there somehow they've turned into hero brine but since i'm in the tree chopping mode i do need to clear all of these out so that we can actually you know build a village at this place so uh let's get back to work We've got ourselves a ton of wood materials here and a big open space to build the village. Now I just need to do a little bit of landscaping, terraforming, all of the above, road building magic and stuff to bring it all the way through here. And oh, you probably need to clear out some of these bushes along the way. Yeah. Next up, I'm going to drop all of our logs off here in the storage mill, lumber mill place for log storage and a quick trip into the city to drop off all the leaves I gathered to save a few materials since we're tearing up a lot of dirt I'm just gonna bring an entire shulker box of gravel with me and we can just craft everything that we need as we're out there which means I need to get rid of the silk touch shovel and go with a regular one I also grabbed a ton of spruce slabs here that should help to get us through and now we can just start the whole process of going through here tearing out all of the dirt grab a little bit of our gravel and make our coarse dirt and fill it all back in I've got everything I need to build the road now so it just takes the time to clear the dirt out and add in the coarse dirt it's super simple but i really enjoy how easy it is to see when i'm flying over the top we are all the way up to the crossroads here with the road coming all the way through there and definitely not the space where i accidentally took the wrong turn down there and should have been going that way so we're creating a crossroads here we can go both directions it's yeah definitely planned i'm embracing the happy accident and i'm building out the road going nowhere for now maybe this leads to a build in the future and maybe I'll actually name the places in this world but for now we've got a we got this one more road building session to connect all the way down to our new village out on the coast just over 500 blocks away from world spawn bringing it to our second farthest village from spawn behind new papyrus being just over 1200 blocks away there's still a few places that I need to fix up along the road well now I'm under the road and that took a lot more durability off my shovel than I thought it would but here we have coming down all the way to the new location oh I love this I ended it right here as uh we've got a lot of terraforming to do to fix this up for the lore we need to raise up the train onto a rocky shelf to explain why the city wasn't established here as these rocks would make it very difficult to establish a large harbor also fun fact I've now mined over 10,000 stacks of materials with the shovel that's a lot of stacks some might say stacks on stacks on stacks let's keep increasing that number as down here i want to flatten the terrain so i can create a mix of a rocky tide pool area and a sandy beach that i think we're gonna wrap a good way around here and probably turn into a lot more of the rocky bits and that should probably be a good stopping point now thankfully i've got a decent amount of sand on me right now so we can just mark out a few of our guidelines so i know what i need to clear i'm thinking the small harbor that we're gonna have for some fishing boats is gonna go right in there so we can leave that open for now now. And I want to take this train back a little bit along here. This should do for the sandy beach here. And then I want to bring it back four or five blocks coming in. And then we'll raise it up again and bring this back in another few blocks. And then a few portions of this are probably going to go up to a third layer. And a lot of the sand is going to be replaced with those tide pools that I'm talking about. At this level, that's where we can establish the rock faces going up that I think are probably going to be six or seven blocks tall. For now, I just need to focus on getting a lot of the sand placed in. 
The sandy beach area is now roughly shaped in, and I've got a ton of empty shulker boxes. As I need to turn this space into more of a shipping channel, which means it needs to be a lot deeper. I need this to go down eight or nine blocks, so I set up a beacon and got to work. Oh man, the pirate who put this here is gonna be so mad. Ah, we found buried treasure. A free heart of the sea. I'll empty this and get the rest in a second. I wasn't expecting to fill up all of these shulker boxes and break so many tools, but hey, at least it's done. And things are looking much more destroyed, but deeper. And deeper for the waterway is much better. I'm gonna try and limit rebuilding the shulker monster so we can empty all of these out and just drop them back in the ground storage for now. And we've got a ton of sand now. Oh, that's awesome. I really need a place to store sandstone. For now, it's just kind of sitting here in this chest. I have like four shulkers, uh, three shulkers of various sandstone things, but we're down to only one junk shulker left. And that, that feels pretty good. I just, I just... Uh, it feels bad doing that, but I'm going to do it right away. I have a lot of tools that I need to repair. So we're making a quick trip out in the end where we can repair everything out here at the Enderman farm. I really wish this was quicker to get to because it is so much faster for experience than the Wither Skeleton Farm. But now it is time to head back to the overworld. Oh, did I just empty out two shulker boxes of stone and now I'm filling up three shulker boxes of stone? Yeah, yeah, I, I did do that. Yeah, I know. I'm not too sure how I want to texture these rocks quite yet, but I do want to focus on just adding in the shapes for now and getting them in place. My current idea is to bring ourselves up to about here and create a little bit of a sea cliff with having this cave back in where maybe the tide used to be hitting it and then we can kind of also have that line up there at the top too and that should be far enough off the ground to raise the entire terrain up and a ton of dirt would just casually slope ourselves up this hill to create a really cool space to build a village on top of yeah that'll work i've built sea cliffs before in my old survival world so i want to reuse those ideas to try and build up the space here along the beach this rock face here is starting to look pretty cool some slabs and stairs will definitely help but if we come up here along the back and just start working a little bit of our coarse dirt and grass that should look really really good just to get the idea of what this might look like i'm just gonna wrap our terrain around here a little bit along the back side before we start sloping it all the way up probably to about that tree line i think it's gonna look really cool having it rolling down we can fly away and see how that changes things up and yep that that's gonna do it honestly i kind of just like the stone in here maybe we'll lighten it up a little bit so we get a bit of sea spray but all the trees over here would be blocking it so i don't think it needs to be too extreme with the first section done i got to work building out the remaining rocks to finish off the cliffs there we go that is looking pretty nice over here and i've wrapped it all the way around to the quarried river section where i stopped with the washed away portion at the base seeing as the waves would be coming from that direction so it felt like they wouldn't be hitting here as much so a normal slope going up was a little bit better in my opinion now for the next task before we put the top on this thing i've crafted a ton of torches and i want to work around underneath and just spam a few of them in to make it a little bit safer once we turn this into a giant dark space we're gonna stop the terraforming along this line for now as eventually i would love to extend this cliff further down the coastline to make sure it's all consistent and uh this seems like a good enough area to build a village for today as i've already kind of spent like eight hours on this yeah good job at me for picking a small project right before the holidays woo looking much brighter underneath and i cleared out a few of the trees over here so we can actually add the grass on top i grabbed two shulker boxes of dirt here and one of grass blocks that we can use to hopefully spill fill fill this entire space not spill the base Sp fill the I'm confused. Step one of terraforming is creating guidelines. So I'm building out a few different lines of our grass blocks going from the top of the cliffs gradually up to the existing Minecraft terrain that allows me to more easily fill in the space in between. With all of these in place, we can grab some of our dirt blocks. As the next step, I want to start creating some crossing lines, perpendicular ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's your fun word for the day. Linking up the different lines that we have going all the way up, we're going to bisect through those so we can create lines going around and figure out a little bit better distance for where the terrain's gonna be going.
From down here, it's looking pretty believable. The more we crouch, yeah. But as we fly up, it needs a lot of work. 30 minutes of dirt placing is a go as we fill in a big chunk of this new landscape. And I've run out of dirt. But I do have a good amount of grass blocks left over in here. So hopefully I can finish off the remaining top portion of our terrain as it's getting a lot smaller here. So I should need a lot less materials. I had to gather a few more stacks of dirt, but here we go. The entire landscape is ready. Minus, you know, this little gap over here, but that's for the future expansion going this way. This is definitely starting to feel very village ready, and I just need to connect the road from there all the way up to here, which I might have the materials to do it. That, that's going to be close. I don't really know where the village is going to go for now, but I guess this is a start in figuring that out, is the road would need to come all the way down here. Maybe we go that way and then loop down i don't know we'll figure it out for the village build i really want to focus on spacing out the buildings and making it a little bit more like each of the houses that we're creating have their own region giving them like a yard that they can build they might all have their own fields and just trying to create a little bit more of a spread out vibe for some reason i keep thinking nordic but i don't think that build style is going to work here when we're really close to the medieval city and i do have a nordic region planned for it so we're going to take a few elements of like a nordic coastal village Oh, hi, Llama. But I'm going to try and incorporate that into how I'm building things here. And I think it should turn out to be pretty cool. Hi, would you like to come out? Either of you? I didn't even know how you got down here. Okay, out this way. Up, go. Get out of here. Nope. I guess we have two llamas that live in the village now. Uh, Yeah, you guys are just going to stay here, aren't you? And the llama's back underneath the mount. The... Uh, okay. He obviously wants to live underground for the rest of his life. So we're going to let him. There we go. Nope, I got five more pieces of coarse dirt. We'll save these for now. With the road in, the base landscape is ready for a village. Before we get too into the detailing, I want to build a small fishing dock at the base of the cliffs. For this, I want a bunch of cobblestone. And with this moss, we can craft it down into mossy cobblestone. A quick jump into the lumber mill or some oak slabs. I got a few. And oak logs. With the ocean out here, I want to create a bit of like a bulwark to make a small protected cove here for the fishing boats. Starting from the inside angle maybe we come out here with a little bit of our cobblestone stretching up to the surface and then i'm thinking if we run a little bit of coarse dirt down the middle for somebody to be able to walk on top of it and take it back in at an angle it could look pretty cool and i don't want it to just be a flat line coming down to the bottom of the ocean i want to make it look like they piled up a lot of stones to create this Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. Now we just need to actually extend this down into the water for the boat ramp. We'll definitely have to redo the base underneath there and get rid of the sand. But for now, I like this. Is that none of the boats will be resting down here in the water. They're all going to be up here completely protected and out of the ocean storm. So we're probably going to have some boat area where they're all being stored right along here. To make it a little safer, we'll just drop some lanterns right down here on top of the dock, and maybe they have some logs that are just sitting around. Okay, we're just gonna add a little bone meal around here with some seagrass so it looks a teeny tiny bit better. And you're still here. Why? Why are you still here? Excuse me, one moment. I got something to settle. Get out of here. Go back to the castle. With the bulwark done, I want to build a boat resting in the water. I'm not too sure how these large boats get from the top down here. Uh, well, that part we know. It's about how they get back up. It's fine. It's it's a lore. I've been adding in a ton of note blocks around here, like those right over there and this pile here to be crab pots. I might replace them with the copper grate when that gets added in, but I like the idea that they're using as much as they can from the sea. We'll put a few fields and farming elements up here along the edge, but my thought is it's kind of hard to grow things out here since the winds would be whipping in so much. So most of the food that they're going to be having is coming from the ocean. Before we can start detailing the beach area, I need to make a quick trip into the nether to fix my wings. 
and then another stop far out into the ocean at a coral reef where i need to gather up a ton of coral fans as well as a bunch of dead coral blocks we can use to build some cool tide pools back at the beach i have built a beach like this before and i really enjoy the look we're going for it's a ton of different blocks going on for all of the detailing but i think it will really add to the vibe making it feel like the waves crashing in here are pretty rough and a lot of the sand was just washed out into the sea leaving the rocks behind with the first little plot done i spent the next hour or so carrying this across the entirety of the sandy beach well no longer sandy beach at the turn i did set up a little light post to warn sailors to not cut the corner so to really bring that effect home i am adding in a small shipwreck along the rocks here speaking of the rocks i want to further detail the base of the cliffs as i want to start adding in a few slabs and stairs onto them to help naturalize it a little bit further from the really blocky look we had before at the scale still have the other half to do over there but this is looking really really cool along here and i'm very happy i took the time to bring all of this in we've got our cold fans we got glow lichen in here to be a little bit of wash off of the sea and speaking of the sea um don't look at it don't see it but overall this is just a really fun vibe to walk along here and see everything and I i'm really really happy with it with that done it's time to add in the village which means i need a plan being a small coastal fishing village i don't want to add in too many buildings so we're going to start with six houses around that i want a place for the boats to rest out of the water a few fields and hopefully a goat pasture we'll see if the goats actually stay inside it but that's that yeah, we'll deal with that soon with some cobblestone here i want to start to build out the base shape of our first house to get an idea of the scale my goal here is to make some really cool like long houses and i think that'll do it along the back here we could add a little bit of an extension maybe coming a block lower just to here since we're raised up a little bit off the train here with the flat face i want to create like a cold storage room that you kind of have to crouch to walk inside and then i just need to flatten all of this out i'm a little low on my coarse dirt but i would like to fill it all in for the floor in here maybe it doesn't need to extend all the way back because i'm pretty much out oh i am out of coarse dirt now actually so it's just gonna go back to here for now i'm just gonna throw a very temporary floor on top with some of our spruce slabs and we can strip down the logs and eventually we'll come back in and fill this with a bunch of barrels and things right now we need uh the top of the house because this is a uh, pretty day one minecraft right here with this being a more simple build shape i want to add in a few more fun elements with our wood materials grabbing a bunch of different mangrove materials dark oak logs jungle logs and planks as well as the typical bunch of spruce stuff We've got a shulker monster set up here for a little bit of building. And to get started on the walls, I want to work up four blocks here with some stripped dark oak logs. Then we can fill in the gaps with some stripped spruce logs and spruce planks. Then here we can pop out a little bit of a doorway and create a front entry that we'll have to work the road up to a bit better. As I think something like this could be pretty cool and we could bring in a mangrove door. To get mangrove for the endpoints of our longhouse here, I want to bring it up to a peak using just the regular mangrove log. And then a trim around all of this with some dark oak stairs. Things are really starting to take shape here, but it is a bit bare. So one, we need windows. But two, I brought along string. As I want to try making a ton of looms, and simply just to change things up, we'll tear this entire strip of spruce planks out and fill it in with the side texture we can get off of the loom block. You know what? I think I like it. Got some extra supports and color in here with some mangrove fences connecting up and a mud brick at the base. Now I've got ladders in here. And for windows, we can use light gray stained glass. Maybe one right there and then two blocks over and one right here. The shutters, we can bring in a little bit more of our mangrove to tie it all together. And here along the back, we'll bring in a little bit of our glass. Then ladders on the inside. I bought a ton of campfires so we can add those up here as a little bit of a cover too. I'm trying to think of all of the weather conditions we'll get out here while building the house and i think something like that is pretty cool maybe even for our little entrance down below they can have a little cover a few more details added in here and i'm starting to really like this now to slap on a roof starting with our jungle planks here along the bottom and then we're gonna strip down a bunch of jungle logs to get a thatch 
ish kind of roof style going on. Before we add those in, however, I would like to come over here with a little bit of our dark oak and we can create these little extra windows so we can get some more light inside the build. I'm thinking the dark oak trap doors, we can just connect them right down there too. And then let's do another over on this side. Purely for inventory management, I'm just not stripping down the logs because I'm going to definitely break a few. But that'll do for the window. Uh, ow. That'll do for our little attic windows. And now we can strip this all the way down. With that in, I jumped over to the back to fill in that roof side as well. I added this little thing in here as a way for heat to get out as they might have like an open cooking fire in the middle. I didn't want to do a full chimney, but I think something like this is kind of cool. So I just hit a soul campfire right in there. I'm trying to keep everything out here very wooden for the theme along with our stone bases that everything's built on top of. And over here, I need a lot more glow lichen. So we will just bone meal these and gather some more up. This can almost be stuck on the roof like it's salt coming in from the ocean sea air and it's just kind of crusted up here. I don't know. And we can fix up the front with a little extra dirt right there. Get rid of the mess of shulker boxes to actually see the build. For slapping something together, I really like how this turned out. Now with the first house done, it's time to plant a field. I needed a place to start the field from, okay? So I had to do the house first, just like I have to ask you to subscribe to my channel. It's that fun part of our little relationship here where me as the YouTuber and you as the viewers, it's a great little battle we do in every single video. And today I think is the day that I can win this one and you actually click the subscribe button. But for real, thank you for all the support this year and the final field of 2023 is coming together. Ha, ah, tricked you. You have been tricked by me. Haha, ha, you've, you've, be, you've been tricked. Here's a second field. Yeah, we're going big today double the field action because I really wanted a second one honestly just stretching up here along the hillside to top off the village I mean just look at it it was so worth adding in you're welcome with that done I'm in need of a lot of materials to finish off the village starting with a quick pit stop over here at the spider farm as I need a lot more string to craft our looms oh there they go about 30 minutes later and we have a good amount okay somehow we got bones too oh we can make looms to the next stop next up as always I am in need of a ton of spruce logs. So I am back in the mega taiga chopping down a bunch of the massive trees. I'm thinking a little over 700 spruce logs. It might be enough. It's going to be close. But I'm not really using spruce trap doors for the first time. So, you know, there is there is some hope. We're just going to add all of these guys back down here. Let's see. What do we have up here? That should be enough mangrove. And that is not enough dark oak. Jungle. Ooh, should be good. Quick nap back at home for once. And off to the dark oak forest we go. Just a mountain range or two away is a massive dark oak forest I use for chopping. For some reason, I don't really like the idea of a tree chopping zone. I like going out to the forest and moving around in the world. It just seems more fun to me. A few more boxes in the piles and we can get building. I want to start with first laying out the cobblestone foundations like we did on the first house, as this is a pretty low effort way to figure out all of the spacing on all of our buildings before we dive too far in and it's annoying to move them. As mentioned, I want this to feel like a very small village. So we have a total of four houses in here for now, and we'll add maybe one or two more over there. But before we get any further, I want to focus a little bit here on our landscaping to make it a bit easier to walk around. We'll change most of this grass out for our course too but i'm thinking for this house we can throw our doorway in right there this one is a little bit bigger so i'm gonna offset the door a touch and we're gonna put it there because if we put it in the center it's gonna feel weird but if we force it over it doesn't feel as weird even though it is not centered it's it's fine i really love how that first house turned out so we're probably gonna go very similar size on these next ones a lot of people ask how i define build styles and well this is one way we're gonna have a very similar house to that but because we're at an angle, it's gonna look a lot different when it comes together. This almost feels Western right now. Until we throw on the roof, it's, uh, it's kind of messing with my brain. But we'll just come inside and we can add on a few of these elements. And for this one, just to totally break it up, we'll do a two tall window. Small change, but it does have a pretty big impact on the outside. Alrighty, last details are going in now with these little bits breaking up the outside. And I decided to break this one up a little bit further by adding this oak bit jutting out on the side. It's a little weird, but I think I'm okay with it. It does give us a tiny bit more space on the interior to work with as I think I can remove these. Nope, not that one. Now to quickly add on the roof 
and we can cross this house off the list. Well, kind of. I've decided to add this back staircase so that we can have a little bit of another difference in it. I'm planning to bring villagers out here, so we're only gonna put the railing around the top. Otherwise, they're just never gonna be able to use the thing. They'd probably kill themselves on it anyways. But beyond that, I was thinking we could add in another one of those little backyard sections. I really loved adding these recently. I think it's a really fun element. That's very simple to add in. We can bring a little bit more core straight out here and then add in a little bit of a pathway coming through. The rest will turn into a garden in when we get into the detailing phase, but for now, we just need a cool entrance. I'm thinking we could do a trap door and then some slabs just going across and then finish wrapping this around. You know what? Instead of this being dirt, we can make it look like they had to raise the land up with some stone. And there we go. Oh, this is cool. I like it. And a lamp. We love lamp. Working into the night a little bit. I think it could look pretty cool to extend our pathway over here. And somehow I got these llamas. I really don't know where they came from, but they're hanging out here now and they're my friend. Yeah. Moving into the next building, I want to make this a little bit more like a plus shape to change things up yet again. As this is meant to be more of a central gathering point in the village, I want to make it pop out a little bit further. Using most of the same build style and elements we have in the first two homes, we can change things up slightly with the shape and add on a new funky top to make it pop out a little bit more. Then of course, rushing off to finish the last house as our village is growing. To here, where I have added in the coarse dirt and been working on the pathways to get up and down and things are looking quite nice. And it's really starting to feel like a village. I've also added a few more of our foliage elements along here with our bushes and a few little pots of flowers. And we've got another little storage place underneath this house with our little yard. And it's uh, it's so cool. It's so quaint and happy and just, yeah, it's so nice. They're definitely a little worn down with with all the hanging roots and everything, but I kind of like the atmosphere that's helping to create. And it is really starting to feel like a village from up on top as well. I do hate to end things on a small number of even builds, so we need some more over here. But first, distraction side project as I never finished the second half of the beach so I wanted to get that done before I completely forgot about it which starts by pushing the stone back a bit and adding in some more sand this helps to define the beach from the rocky cliffs so I can jump back in more quickly now to build out some more of those cool tide pools which I really really enjoy how these look and it helps to bring together this whole coastal vibe from here we are starting operation shipping lane as well uh the water's a little shallow no diving allowed here so we need to dig it down a ton, which means I need to cover the entire channel with some beacons. After grabbing the supplies, I placed in three different beacons about 50 blocks apart to cover the entire channel. And we're gonna get a lot of stuff out of this, so we can start with 10 empty shulker boxes. Before diving in safely as a trained professional, I got to work clearing out the terrain, taking it down deep enough underwater to where it gets a little bit darker as the sun isn't able to reach all the way to the bottom. We're about an hour in now, and this is starting to look really good. And that means I probably need another about hour, hour and a half to clear all of that out and uh, a lot more shulker boxes. This turned into a pretty massive grind that I wasn't expecting. So I split it into four sections to tackle one at a time to make a little bit more progress and something more achievable in my brain, resulting in over three hours of digging time underwater, which is a pain in itself. And to make things worse, I broke a fully enchanted netherite pickaxe during this. Fs in the comments, please. This was not in vain as the shipping lane is now completely dug out. I've just got to remove these beacons, just a few shulker boxes, and clean up the cliffs. That's a future foot problem. Taking a look back at where we started today with pretty much nothing, I am very happy with the progress on the village and landscape so far. But we need to build more. Down here towards the water, I've talked about this being like a boat ramp for the boats to get down there, then go out to the sea which means that we need to carve this terrain back here a little bit to make space for some of our boats to be dry docked. Let's see, how long is this boat? Let's start it from here and we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, that's, that's... 10 blocks, right? This is gonna be a little big. So the boats are five wide, so I'm gonna shove it all the way over here that I can, and we need to bring ourselves back a good few blocks. It's gonna be pretty snug down here, but I think we can take it back all this way and just build up a cobblestone retaining wall. Right, if I count this out realistically to try and put three boats in here, 
it's coming all the way to here <laughs> and that is a massive space i guess this place is themed around fishing though so they do need a lot of boat space so maybe it makes sense Okay, it's not as big as I thought it would be. And with these little dry docks in here, I think we can use the space pretty well. How? By building up two more boats out of the water, of course. This is looking pretty good up here. We can add in a few more of our note blocks right around the edge as if they're crab pots waiting to go out still. And maybe a little workstation back here. Yeah, something like that. This one we're going to leave empty as well. That boat's right there already. And I don't want to build another. I do want to add a little bit of glow like along here as I'm sure this place is going to be spawning mobs like crazy. And well, we've used it as decoration everywhere else, so it kind of fits in. The only thing we're going to be leaving up to a little bit of the mystical lore here is uh, how the boats get from there up to here. Going down there, you know, it's just a wee we're gonna slide down how they get back up this steep hill that's a lore mostly because it's built on a diagonal and i was thinking about putting a chain thing and you can't send chains diagonally so uh i don't have any ideas on how to fix that moving right along into our next build i'd actually like to bring it right here next to the boat storage as it's meant to be a bit of a workshop where we're gonna have a little bit of an outdoor work yard about here maybe going one two three four five six seven blocks coming back where we can create a bit of a walkway to get up to it right here and then of course I do want to attach a house next to it that I think I'm going to raise up another block just to separate them even further. This is just going to be another one of our longhouse style homes up here, but I want to have the roof really extending out with some slabs going that are going to connect all the way down there for our work yard. This here should work for the walls and we're a decent distance higher above that. So I think slabs can actually naturally come down. Before I do the rest of the roof, let's get that figured out. I'm completely out of dark oak stairs, so we can get some more here. And we'll start with our slabs, just bringing these up one at a time, going all the way to the roof line. And if it breaks above it just slightly, that's okay. I'm okay with a little bit of the overlap. This roof line would come through here. A lot of people have asked me to do more building on camera, so I quite literally decided to wing it for this entire episode. So if you've enjoyed this process, let me know, because it is way different than what we normally do. Ooh, this is going to be too hard hi that's not gonna work next plan is instead of stepping up by one half slab at a time we do it every other gonna make it a lot shorter for sure and it will quite literally even it out perfect into the side okay maybe this is the solution right this entire place is in and it's a lot of dark oak this might be a little light in here but i've been really enjoying using andesite to fill in some spaces so we're just gonna try that here and then we can also help to lighten this up a touch by bringing in some of our spruce trap doors. Maybe we bring some spruce logs coming all the way down there. And then on this edge, we can just add in a few of our mud brick walls to kind of frame it. Nah, I don't really, no, maybe I do like that. And we can just do that like every other or something a little bit like that, I guess, kind of works. <laughs> I guess. Right. Before we decide if we hate this or love this, let's just add in the rest of the roof, starting with our mangrove logs here at the end, and then I'll just slap in all of the jungle stuff. Little glow lichen on the top to be able to spawn proof this a bit better. And maybe that'll help kind of tone down the crazy just dark oak everywhere. I'm really not loving it right now, but I'm just going to leave it and see if I enjoy it as it sits here longer so i've been detailing this entire place out think it's gonna be a fishing village full of fishermen because i was gonna add a few barrels throughout and maybe a few other random villager professions and then um uh, i realized this block i've been detailing with the entire time being the loom there's like 20 of them on each house at least minimum maybe more so it's gonna be a village of shepherds probably i wanted fishermen Oh man, we're too far sunk to change it. But our workshop is looking pretty good over here. I really like how this has turned out and I think it fits the environment pretty well. Especially when you take a little fly away and look back at it, the village is really starting to come together. We need a lot more details, especially bone mealing up the grass and everything like that. But first up here, 
this big flatter terrain i've got a great idea for we need to extend it out that way a little bit more but i want to build a house for a shepherd yep yep i said it we're gonna give him a job for the final building i want to add another longhouse with a backyard for the shepherd to live in and i'm really loving the environment i've created here but we are back to six structures in the village and i personally find odd structures to be a little bit more pleasing to the eye well an odd number of structures so over here i'd like to build a lean-to for some animals to live inside and then we can build them a big pasture over here this is gonna be a pretty small structure as they won't need too much space just somewhere to get out of the weather if they need to with a simple roof thrown on we can leave this as a pretty open air structure There we go that should do the trick there we go we've got a total of eight elements in here but this one doesn't really count as a building so much so i think it's gonna work out just fine now for the animal pasture itself i first need to clear out a good chunk of trees and using the axe would help so that we can extend our custom train out even further and not just into the canopy of these once all these leaves decay that should be the perfect amount of space that we need then from here we can repurpose the dirt i just obtained while digging out the shipping channel to extend the train further out and create that space for our new animals that is looking much better up here i've added in a small gate that we're just gonna leave as closed for now and then from here i want to take a bunch of our oak leaves and start creating a massive hedge that's going to be the border around the animal pasture not only will this hopefully work as a great border but it's also going to be a nice little snack for the animals too when they're hungry they can just nibble on the leaves and get some food and on this side we can bring it right up here along the road as uh being a, being an el natural fence it doesn't need a whole lot of ground to grow off of so uh we'll be fine right that is the easy part done getting the hedge around the field I just don't know if it's actually gonna work or not. As well, my plan here is to bring mountain goats and put them here, which means they jump really high. So I think we can be a little cheeky here and craft ourselves some spruce fences. And in the middle of the pasture, we can have a small amount of our little bushes and hide some fences in here. And unfortunately, I think all of the goats that I'm gonna have inside the pasture are just gonna be hooked on leads tied around here to make it look like they're kind of munching on the bushes, doing goat stuff. I don't know, we're just gonna have some goats doing goat stuff step one of having goats doing goat stuff i need goats i've got some leads in here and i think having six plus goats we'll go for nine would be really cool a quick stop here we can grab a little bit of wheat from the automatic wheat farm that is wow it's completely full oh i need to come craft hay bales i'll do that later i definitely don't need two stacks of wheat though I i'm not getting that many goats and maybe there's still some goats up here on the top of the mountain there's there's cows there's chickens there's no goats in the biome where goats are supposed to spawn there's more chickens though ah no that's a cow that's not a goat ah, that's a sheep closer closer Ooh, emerald oh my gosh i finally found one it's just at the far mountain range. <gasps> There's two. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That's all we need. If we got two, we could bring them both home and just start breeding. Come here, buddy. Follow the wheat. Follow the wheat. Where's your friend? Yes, please. Follow me. Don't charge me. Don't. No, you don't. I would like a goat horn, but maybe not now. Right. I've got a very long walk ahead of me and I don't have a bed. It's middle of the day. Okay, let's get going. I keep looking away and they keep trying to like headbutt me. They keep, ah, look at that. He's charged at me. Ah. <laughs> Come on, both of you, get over here. Oh, that's nice. Goats can swim. Well, since we know goats can swim, I'm going to chop this tree down, make a bunch of planks and do a crafting table on the fly to make a boat for myself. Come on, boys. Well, one of you is a boy. The other... It's Minecraft. It's fine. Come on, goats. They get a nice little water skiing session before they live in a pen tied to a fence for the rest of their lives. I'm not mean, I promise. Ah, that's the coast. <laughs> look at them go. Wow. No, nope, that's the coast again. That, I should really look where I'm going. Oh, we've almost made it. Welcome home, my goaty friends. Just ignore the fact that your train's floating. It's fine. It won't be floating forever, I promise. Maybe in the future at some point. Okay, I've lost both my goats. I went to go sleep and reset it to the morning. Come on, buddy. And... No, how did we lose another goat? Stop eating that bush. Get in here. You both can just be attached to that one and yay. Oh, that actually looks, that looks pretty good. Can I breed you guys now? There. Oh my gosh. Wow. Calm down there. Calm down. Don't you do it. Yeah, that works. That works great. Thank you. Look at the little family. Oh my gosh. They're. Yep. This is why they're tied to fences. <laughs> I just got to wait a little while before I can breed them again, and then we can keep growing the herd. Now as the next step, I'd like to move a few villagers into the village. 
as it can bring a little bit more life out here there than our llamas and goats so first i'm gonna need a bed inside of every single one of the homes and uh well a floor i probably also need a floor i also never even finished the basement of this house so i'll do that real quick here i get a little cobblestone up and then we can just add a few of our wooden beams going across with some slabs in and then i also like the idea of some of these homes just having a dirt floor inside ah what a lovely interior oh the villagers are gonna love it here goes ben Bed number two. Oh, and they have a barrel. Perfect. Bed number three. Need a bit of a floor in this one as well. Oopsies. And the last house. Ah, uh, dang it. Well, that'll have to do. Can we breed the goats again? Yes, we can. I'll help you down. I'll help you. I know you like jumping, but yeah, there we go. Oh, it's another little guy. Maybe this guy really likes the bush down here. Yeah. Well, we wait for the goat breeding cooldown one more time. We need to get our first villagers in as I think this is going to be even more painful than the goats. And I believe there is a village right over here. Yes. And it looks like that is a consistent downhill to the water. Even better. <gasps> Villager, get in this boat. I need you immediately over here over nope 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 okay oh that works too that works I can work with that now I need to be very careful to not get stuck in the path blocks dropping down but I think I can just take ourselves all the way down to the water from here the first villager has made it to the water and I believe this should be an opening all the way back out to the front yes there's the little shipwreck all right second villager is a go and this is the same path I took before I've never noticed this and this is bugging me so I'm gonna let it forever bug you as well the top of the shoulders for the villagers has no texturing like none it's just one pixel color then you look at the arms you look at everywhere else even the top of their head, texturing. Aww. Top of their shoulders, nothing. You're welcome. That's going to bug you every time you look at a villager now. Okay, villager number two has been delivered. And let's see, villager number one, do you want to walk on up the hill? Yes. Yes. No. Oh, no. It's a good attempt. Oh, uh, no, he's trying again. Yeah, he's gonna... Oh, oh, there he goes. No. Okay, I need to get rid of all of the workstations down here, which I think they can only reach these grindstones. And they're in the same boat. Of course. Okay, boys, let's go up the hill now. No, this way. This way, sir. No, you can't climb that. All the... Yeah, look at you. You're so smart. Come on. Follow your friend. Uh, now they're just gonna live in these boats. Oh, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Ah, yep. Weaponsmiths. That's what I wanted in the fishing village. Weaponsmiths. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, what are we picking this time? Oh, we're trying for the cauldron. Wow, look at you, so cool. Ah, another weapon, Smith. You know what? At least they're up here, and I did keep all the extra potatoes. I was planning to plant in the fields. And uh, here, just see what magic we can create to populate the village. Your friend over there. Yeah, okay, fine, 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 fine. Why are you going that way? Ah, I hate villagers so much. Ah, oh, my gosh. Nope. Don't, don't go back to the water, please. Just look, uh, maybe they'll find beds. Maybe we just wait for nighttime and they'll find their beds. The sun is setting. Don't do it. Don't fall off the cliff, please. You're so close. Just go find a bed. Just go claim a bed in the village. That'd be lovely. No, you you don't live there anymore. You live here. Look at this upgrade. Look how beautiful this home is compared to your last one. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm okay. Fine. You're going in the boat. You're tra you're trapped. He can sit there and think for a while. I have seemed to have lost the other villager. This is going terribly. Oh wow, yeah, it's going very terribly. Okay, um, I guess I just need to sleep and hope the other one's still alive. He did it. He survived the night and he stayed in the village. Do you want to stay in the village? Do you want to be a part of the village? No, you want to go back to your, your old home. I get it. Fine, fine, fine. I just want you guys to live here. While we wait for the villagers to do their thing, I thought here in the center of the village, we could come in with a little bit of our stone and not really creating a well, but my goal here is to do more of like a cistern, just a place where they're capturing some of the fresh water from rainfall and using that as clean drinking water. Hello, goaties. Let's go again. Come on, don't be shy. Hey, look at the little one. Oh, the little, other little one's flying. To add some extra detail here, I want to bone meal the surrounding space to add in some tall grass, removing all of the flowers that pop up in the process to just have a clean, green, bushy feel. After sitting in his boat for a while, rethinking his decisions, uh, he decided that he wants to live in the village now. So that's great. And he's uh, hooked on my stone cutter for now. Uh, I'm going to take that in a minute. But they are throwing potatoes back and forth. So hopefully that means we can get a third villager soon. But with all of our tall grass in, this is 
is looking so much better around here. I was originally thinking I needed to add in a ton of trees, but I'll be honest, with just the grass, I really, really like this. I've been trying to think of extra little details we can throw around the space, and I saw some chickens up there, so I think I'm going to tear this down. Oh, right. That's where my... Uh... That's where all my stuff was. But there is a chicken even in the field right there. So I think we can make a tiny little chicken coop. That's literally just going to be that. Make the walls out of trapdoors so it's a little bit more spacious on the inside. And look at him. He's already living here. With some rails, we can make a little staircase for the chickens to move up and down. But we're just going to leave it closed so that they stay inside. Now, where did that chicken go? Oh, hi, buddy. And fall inside, please. And Stay inside. We got one chicken in a uh, okay chicken coop. It, it'll work. It'll work. We've got hearts. We've got villager hearts. Please. There's like eight beds here. Oh, I think I. there's a child. Yes, we have a child. And there's more potatoes being thrown around. Oh, yes. It's a success. We have a village. I think it's the chicken coop that really sold it and brought it home. I've also been breeding up the goats a bunch. And look at this. We've got seven of them in here now. And I kind of just love that they're hanging around the bushes. You can't really tell they're tied to the leads because they added some tall grass in. So it's really difficult to see, especially when you're up here. So that is really cool. My son jumping and being pulled back. I feel a little bad about that, but it's okay. This is a simple fishing village, but it's a good one. We've accomplished a ton today with this new village transformation and eh, new build, not even transforming anything. Starting from the flatland here that we did transform, we've got a full custom beach biome and sea cliffs, and of course, the fishing village on top with the goat pasture, which I just love way too much. But I am all out of time here as I quite literally need to leave for the airport in like 20 minutes to go pick up some family who are flying in for the holidays. Please leave a like on this episode as it helps me out a ton and subscribe if you're new. It's that glowing button right below the video right now. Ooh, look fancy. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. All that good stuff. And uh, I'll catch you all on the flip side. I don't know what that villager's doing. Oh, he stopped. Okay.